Our top stories tonight are families left behind. One seeking answers in the sudden death of her husband and a stranger whom she says were both hit and killed by the same driver. The other, countless Southeast Texans impacted by the loss of more than a thousand of our neighbors who died from the coronavirus. That's where we start tonight, 1004. Each victim, so much more than a number. The impact of their lives leave behind grieving families, friends, students, congregations, and communities. He's a great guy. You know, he's just, uh, he's just he's what I call old school police officer. You know, um, what you see is what you get. Um, he loves everybody he meets and never met a stranger. He was more than just a father figure. You know, he was that guy. He was that man. 12 News reporter Amelia White has been taking a look back on this last year. She's speaking with some of the families left behind, and she joins us live tonight. Dej, this pandemic has been marked by grief and loss, and as we reflect on those who've passed away, I sat down with Kevin Robertson. He lost his grandmother to the virus, and he said it changed him forever. I never expected any of this to happen. Many people across our region. All of our hearts break just thinking of his students going back to, to a class without him or, you know, his family coming home without him. That's obviously a tough loss. Have spent the last year. And he definitely was a, a soldier on the battlefield. You know, he fought until the Lord decided to call him home. Drowning in grief and sorrow because of one deadly virus. When I think of uh, 1,000, my grandma was a part of that number. It kind of hit, like, every time I see it. 1,004. It resembles how many Southeast Texans have lost their lives to an invisible virus. Kevin believes his grandmother, Sandra Robson, caught COVID-19 while driving for Beaumont's ISD transportation team. He worried about her being exposed while on the clock, and his biggest fear came true. Four months later, Kevin still thinks about those what-if moments. If only she would have worked from home, you know, in the comfort of her bed, her desk at, at the house. You know, she could have still been alive. She could have still been, you know dancing with us, laughing, you know, eating food, all the good things. And next month, the Robinson family would have been celebrating another good thing. You know, she close to retirement. She just wanted to get it out of the way so she could retire in May, which is actually next month she would have retired. So it's another hard point that just hit. So 1,004 COVID-19 deaths later, memories are all people like Kevin have to hold on to, thanks to a virus that cut so many lives too soon. We love to play music, and we love to dance, and she always was like, Wendell, play my song. And this was the first time she wasn't there to tell Wendell to play her song, so that's when it kind of hit us like she's really gone. As you can see, this is still fresh on Kevin's heart. He's encouraging people to continue to social distance and wear your mask because this pandemic is not over just yet. I'm live in Beaumont, Amelia White, 12 News. So I'm a reminder there, Amelia, and there are some positive signs that the community has a hold on the virus, says hospitalization numbers continue to, de to decline. Some units that were exclusively used for COVID-19 patients are preparing to close. Both the Medical Center of Southeast Texas and Christus Southeast Texas St. Elizabeth are doing away with their designated COVID overflow units this week. And the Mid-Jefferson Extended Care Hospital will no longer be used as a backup COVID facility. Healthcare workers say it's a welcome relief. We are very encouraged to be able to relieve some of the pressure um, in our hospital system and return some of our units back to their original use. Emotionally, what a high, right? That before this, we were pretty much a COVID hospital. 12 News reached out to Baptist Hospital to see if they will take similar action. We expect to learn more about their plans soon. Well, big help in the fight against this virus are the vaccines. Texas is still lagging behind the rest of the nation with less than 18% of the population fully vaccinated. As our local hubs disband, county health departments are left on their own to request doses and manage their operations. Hardin County will be continuing their walk-up clinic at the Journey Community Church in Lumberton for the rest of the week. You, don't, you can show up between 1 and 4 p.m. and you don't have to be registered in the vaccination portal. So by the numbers you've been hearing the headline all day today, more than a thousand Southeast Texans have passed away due to the coronavirus. This is a tough milestone for this tight knit community. So here's how those numbers break down. Jefferson County has reported the most deaths with 403. Now Chambers County has the least 25 deaths, but things are still getting better. There were 84 new COVID cases reported in the region on Wednesday, and most of those did come from Chambers County. 
but hospitals are where we are seeing the biggest gains. Jefferson County Judge Jeff Brannick says new COVID cases and hospitalizations are the lowest they've been since the end of last August, and the numbers back that up. A little more than 7% of patients in general beds have the coronavirus, and 17% in the ICU. Our region's hospitalization rate stands at 8.5%, and as you can see, all of those numbers are down from our last report. Going to go ahead and switch gears to track the threat of severe weather in southeast Texas. This is a live look from our roofing 911 sky cam overlooking the city of Orange. Now throughout the night, we have a marginal to slight risk of severe weather. You see it there on the screen. Chief Meteorologist Patrick Vaughn joins us tonight from the Storm Tracker Center. Patrick, want to know, are there any areas you're keeping a closer eye on? No, I think uh, for the most part, we may be uh, done with any threat for severe weather as we take a look. You can pretty much uh, pencil out uh, Tyler, Northern Jasper, Northern Newton counties. You're done. And uh, we have been watching this line all night long, and it has certainly weakened uh, from what we were looking at earlier. It stretches from Hardin County back over towards Saratoga between uh, Kuntz and uh, Lumberton, Evadale, Silsby back over towards southern sections of Jasper and Newton County. Just not a lot left with this line as it continues to head uh, towards the triangle after about 1030, maybe 11 tonight. It has slowed, yes, and it has weakened, and then it heads towards the coastline after midnight. After that, we'll be watching dense, patchy, dense fog forming in the morning across southeast Texas. So be careful if you have to take off in the morning and the fog is in the forecast as we dip into the lower 60s here in the triangle. Going to be into the uh, mid uh, 50s up in the lakes area. More on your storm tracker forecast coming up on 12 News. On June 13th, my husband was run over and hit like a dog left to die in the middle of the road, one of the busiest roads in this town. Your chief of police, Paul Davis, back there, you ask him why I never got a visit, not one visit after my husband was killed to tell me he had been killed. So you can just feel the pain through her words. That's Mandy Jackson, and it's her plea at the Bridge City Council meeting last night. It's gone viral across southeast Texas. It's not the first time she's publicly asked for more information in the hit and run death of her husband, Robert. She says a woman named Jillian Blanchard was hit and killed by the same driver. In August, the two families held a protest outside of the police department. And tonight, Mandy spoke exclusively with our Jordan James. June marks one year since Robert Jackson was killed, and his widow says not a day goes by that she doesn't remind folks of the injustice that she says is happening. A makeshift memorial marks the spot where Robert Jackson drew his last breath. Every time I come, I think about his last moments. During a routine bike ride home last June, Jackson was hit and killed. Since then, his wife Mandy has been fighting for justice and respect. That there is a disparity in this town. There is a disparity in this county. And if you sit silent when you see these injustices, you're just as wrong. Charges have yet to be filed in his case and unanswered questions by the Bridge City Police prompted Mandy to bring her message directly to the City Council Tuesday. I thought about Robert today and he deserves justice. And I haven't gotten that from one officer in this police department. In a statement, Bridge City Police Chief Paul Davis told 12 News, quote, we provide Miss Jackson with information as often as we have it. Sometimes the information is the same. There's nothing that has changed. I did officer, lieutenant, captain, chief. I've called the district attorney. I'm getting nothing. Chief Davis says the biggest thing holding up Jackson's case is that evidence is still being reviewed, saying in part, I can assure you and the families that we're working to make sure that we file the highest possible charges that we can. We can't do that until we have all of the evidence present to the district attorney's office. As for Mandy, the wait for justice has taken its toll, but she's determined to see it through. And I need people to know that right now, the message that this town is sending me, the message that is being clearly portrayed is that Robert's life doesn't matter. And it does. 
Chief Davis says evidence from the crime lab should be back by the end of the month. Then it will get turned over to the district attorney office to move this case forward. Reporting here live in Bridge City, Jordan James, 12th News. Governor Abbott is ordering a state-level investigation of a federal immigration center after he claimed unaccompanied minors have been sexually abused, neglected, aren't eating, and that there are not enough staff members to safely supervise the children. He says it happened at the Freeman Coliseum Expo Hall in San Antonio, where about 1,300 children are living temporarily. In short, this facility is a health and safety nightmare. The Biden administration is now presiding over the abuse of children. To end this abuse, the Biden administration must immediately shut down this facility. Governor Abbott says two separate state agencies received a tip from at least one anonymous caller this morning. The Bear County Sheriff's Office confirmed they were called out to the Coliseum for allegations of a sexual offense and that the investigation is ongoing. The Department of Health and Human Services is also investigating. In case you missed it, this was the scene of a massive fire off I-10 East and Sheldon in Channel View earlier this evening. Fire crews have since put it out and the shelter in place order for families in the area has been lifted. The facility is owned by KSOL, a chemical distribution company. Officials say the fire started during a dump transfer operation, which is the transfer of one product into a smaller container. One employee was taken to the hospital out of an abundance of caution. Nike has suspended its sponsorship deal with Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson because of the growing lawsuits and allegations against him. In a statement, the company said, We're deeply concerned by the disturbing allegations and have suspended Deshaun Watson. We will continue to closely monitor the situation. Well, it was a sad day in Texas as mourners gathered for the funeral of fallen trooper Chad Walker. The DPS trooper was fatally wounded in an ambush near Mah Mahaya on March 26th. Walker was kept on life support for a few days in order to be able to donate his organs. He leaves behind a wife and four children. Check your bank accounts. The IRS said Social Security, SSI, and railroad retirement recipients should get their money today. Most likely direct deposit or on their direct express card. But stimulus payments for VA beneficiaries who don't regularly file tax returns could be delayed until mid-April. The agency says it is reviewing data and will provide more details soon.